Leader, Mr. Mr. Speaker. Um, the White House coming in said that they were not going to negotiate a debt ceiling increase. Leaving this meeting and at this meeting, did you come away with the impression that Joe Biden is not going to negotiate a debt ceiling increase? I felt as though we had a very good conversation, um, and we left it by saying we will continue the conversation. That doesn't mean we have an agreement. I think, though, we have a better perspective where each, each of us are. And I truly believe we can come to an agreement based upon. Does that mean they're negotiating with you? Him that you were going to be able to send 218 votes in the House on. No, I didn't commit. We didn't commit anything. What we did, we sat down for a first discussion, and I think the first discussion went well enough that we said we wanted to continue it. Um, he laid out his perspective. I laid out mine. Um, we have different different ideas, but. I don't believe that we can't find the common ground to get to an agreement. So is he negotiating I, I, then? Look, I'm not going to put words in his mouth. We left by saying we will talk again. That doesn't mean it could be where we walk, we get together and we solve this all together, or he could call call back on the next one and say, no, let's just fight. But I, I felt as though we had a very good, and I think he'll probably tell you too, we had a good first conversation, and we both agreed we would continue. Well, to well, you his perspective that it only has to be a clean debt ceiling increase? Is that what he voiced to you? It, only, it can only be a clean debt ceiling increase. Um, I, I was clear to him. I, I'm not. Pa we can't. Pa we're not going to pass a clean debt ceiling. I mean, that that's just. You told him that directly. Yeah, I mean, and he told me the perspectives that he wanted, but I don't believe we can. The American public does not want. You look at the latest poll, 74 percent. We have spent too much. They want to find places that we can find waste. They want to find places that we can be more efficient and more accountable. And I'm willing to work on that. Did you? Are you? You said yesterday you were skeptical. That you were skeptical that they were serious about this. And you know, they yeah, were playing. I, you, are you less? You, my perspective from this meeting was good, um, but I don't want to give you any false impression. There's no agreement. There's no. But. I, I left this meeting with a better perspective than I had walking into the meeting. And I, I felt as though we were honest with one another. Um, there are times where we were far apart, but we're not, we're not negotiating the fine details. I think we're laying out our vision of where we're going, but having spoken um, to them for more than an hour, and there's times it was up, there's times it was down, but I think we, we came to the final conclusion that we'll talk again. So I took that point. Mm -hmm. Leaving the meeting. Do you have? Got, well, right now you're on a trajectory that's just an upward m movement, right? Sure. Of the debt. So you, path. Well, <laughs> look, I want to sit down and talk, but we've got to find a way that we put ourselves to change that trajectory of debt from going up to coming down. You cannot have debt larger than your economy. We've never been in this place that we are right now. We have more revenues coming in than at any time in the history of this country. So we don't have a revenue problem. We have a spending problem here. So I want to find ways that we change that, ways that we can work together to do that. Um, we both have to work together to make it happen. He's the President of the United States. I happen to be the Speaker. So you've got to be able to work together to find this. We've got five months to do it. I thought the meeting today was a good first start. That doesn't mean that it all comes to fruition, but walking out, I can see that it could come together. I, I, w I was very hopeful from the meeting, was better than I thought, um, just like anything else. And if we're able to walk through and continue these conversations, there will be ups and downs. There'll be times you thought you had an agreement, like anything else that's great, it may fall apart and come back together. But leaving the meeting today, it wasn't like, See you in June. It was coming together. The markets of having ups no, I, 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 I would feel better if I was the markets based upon the meeting I had today. Did you lay out a specific level of cuts? Did you get to that level of specificity? It was our very first meeting. I think we both, to me, we both laid out our perspectives of where we wanted to go. I didn't put any, look, I, I don't walk into an agreement and say, this is my fine line and I have to have this or nothing. That's not how government is designed. I was very clear that. We're not passing a clean debt ceiling. We're not spending more next year than we spent this year. We've got to find a way to change this, and I want to sit down and work with you. So, so those are the two years. Two, two year I would like to um, get to a um, 
to know what we would spend for the next two years. I think government would work better. I think we would have a lot of savings in that because the Senate then would have to actually do appropriation bills so the public could participate in that. Senators could participate in that. You'd have to pass a budget. This is really the fundamental things that government has to do. Now that's going to be on Schumer. He's never done something like that, but he would have to do that. But so could the start of a negotiation? Look, I, I don't want to misinterpret anything. We had a very good discussion today, and we left this discussion with saying we will talk again. Is, what is the process? When is going to be more difficult, coming to an agreement with President Biden or finding 218 votes among your party on what can, regarding Look, the settlement? If, if somebody comes, if we come to an agreement together, I don't think what comes out will have to be just 218 on Republicans. Um, I think an agreement, like anything else in compromise, just like it would have to be in the Senate, it won't be one side because one side can't pass it. I think if you're able. Now, now, that's down the road. We just had a first discussion today. So the one thing I can tell you, after the meeting today, we're not walking out and saying we're just going to fight each other. We're saying, all right. We have differences of opinion, but I think it's worth sitting down and continuing this conversation. To me, that is a positive. Have what is the process the from here? Up? Are you going to have a working group? Are you going to meet with the White House officials? Are you going to come up with your own proposal? What's the process? I don't want to jump the gun and anything else. Our next conversations could move in that, but we'll have to see. He left it was, let, let me talk to some more, and then let's have a conversation. You said, there, you know, there's not going to be a clean debt. What is the reaction? But I need a clean debt. So, look, we, we laid out our perspectives, but I don't believe in walking through the tone in the discussion. I look, it's a long way away, but I really feel as though I can see where we could come to an agreement. Did he indicate any spending cuts he could live with? Look, we didn't exchange papers in that place. And the one thing I, I want to be very clear with all of you as we walk through this path. I'm not going to go negotiate with you. I want to make sure this works if we're able to do it. I want to make sure that I'm respectful in every manner. I want to make sure our members know what we're doing. But if I negotiate this in the press, there won't be an agreement in the end of the day. Is Mr. Biden someone you can do business with? Look, I, we worked together when he was vice president. This is really our first step in working together as president. I would tell you, I don't want to give any misin misimpression on this, but um, this meeting was better than I thought it would take place. No agreements, but I thought our discussions with one another um, were very respectful to one another, and we were very honest with one another. And um, anybody that you sit down and work with that, I walk away believing, yeah, we could come to an agreement that would be good for the American public. Did you talk about anything other than he you keep saying that you are feeling way more confident leaving that meeting, but was that, but was that because he was open and, and maybe even laid out places where he could be okay with certain cuts? Well, let's put it in perspective, all right? The only thing I heard for the last month was, I'm not going to negotiate with you. I just spent an hour sitting with the president in the Oval Office talking about what could we do on a debt ceiling. So the first start is, okay, that's different than what a last month was. And then I left after having this discussion was, it wasn't, okay, bye, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow up again for a next one. So that puts it in perspective that something's different than it was a month ago. Now we have five months to do this, and my, what I told to him was, I'd rather not wait to the deadline. I'd rather get something, if we could come to an agreement, let's do that now um, and see if we can because we have a lot of work to do now. Look, he has his budget due, it's going to be a month late. If we're sitting around waiting for another month for his budget, it's delaying everything, and I think that puts the country in some, what, of a jeopardy. Your budget's supposed to come out April 15th, mm -hmm. so is that going to be your opening offer? So are we waiting until April 15th no. to know? What I don't want to wait till April 15th. I don't want to wait for another month for his budget. I would like to start discussing things now. We look, we'll, we'll get uh, the CBO numbers again here shortly, so you'll have some new numbers. But think for one moment. If nothing is done in the next 10 years, we will spend $8 trillion just on interest, just on interest. So any family that has a credit card that's 
overspent and you make a payment but it only goes to interest, that's where this country is at. And that's not a strong financial place to be in and it's harming the future generations. So it's responsible for all of us to come together and find an ability that we can come to an agreement that changes the trajectory of our debt to going into balance, not continuing to grow. Is it realistic to do one-to-one -one spending cuts to raise, to raise the so debt ceiling? That's what, is I that did, realistic to you? I did not, say, I did not go in, in, the, in there with any predetermined things we had to have. This is our very first discussion. The discussion today was he was never going to negotiate with me. So we just spent an hour together. So I assume that's a little different. I would like to continue that. And um, I thought we had a good discussion right now. We both were very honest and laid out different perspectives. We had times that we disagreed, but in, in the parts that we were disagreeing, we were on, very honest and I was very straightforward in things I would not do. Like what? Like, ra like just raise a clean debt ceiling. That's not going to happen. We're not just going to keep spending and just raise the limit on our credit card. We're going to do something different. But I'm t in telling him that, but I'm more than willing to sit down and talk to him and work with him on how we change this together. Now, let me ask you one, uh, on that, on that topic, you, you know, some other presidents have taken the perspective of you're not going to do that. I'm going to take this to the public and I'm going to, I'm going to beat you up over this. Uh, did he try to? Did he indicate that 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 he's going to try to convince people that we, the debt ceiling that you should raise a clean debt ceiling? We we did not leave in that manner. No. Um, who knows? We could get there, but we did not. <laughs> we did. We, we did not leave in that way. We we left saying, "All right, this was a good discussion. No agreements have been made to anybody about anything, but this discussion was good enough." to continue at least to have one more. There are members of your party, there are members of your party who think that the bu budget can be balanced within 10 years through non-defense discretionary spending cuts only. Do you think that that's possible? Well, they'd have to show me their budget to see that does it. Look, the, there's two things that you have to do here, right? You've got to curb your spending and raise more revenue from the, from the basis we have more revenue coming in because of the tax bill we were able to pass. The economy is stronger. There's more revenues than at any time coming into the American coffers. The challenge that we're having is the spending trajectory. If you look at the Democrats that were in power in Congress for the last four years, we were in power eight years before that. If you look at just the discretionary spending in the eight years we were in the majority, discretionary spending, you know how high it went up? Not one dollar. It went down ten billion. In those four last four that years, was sequestration, right? It doesn't matter what it was. It was Republicans in the majority who were writing it. The Democrats in the last four years. You know how high discretionary spending increased in those four years? Half the time, thirty percent, four hundred and thirty billion dollars. So no one can sit and tell me that there's not waste in government. No one can sit. I'm not saying you have to pass a debt ceiling to make sure the. the the budget is balanced in two years or others. What I'm saying is we have to change our trajectory of what we're spending on. And that's the thing I want to sit down and talk about. Are you at all concerned about a discharge petition could come to the B6? Have you talked to your members? Yeah, I don't think I don't think the American public wants it. Look, there was the latest poll: seventy-four percent of Americans do not believe you should just raise the debt ceiling without doing anything. Why would they believe that? Because they don't do that in their own home. You don't do that in your business. You don't do that in your county government, in your state government. Nobody does that, and at no time should we do it as well. Did you, Did you get the sense that Biden wanted revenues to be on the table? No, we didn't talk about. You, you didn't talk about anything other than debt limit at this meeting with the president. The White House indicated this was going to be a meeting about a lot of topics. Did a lot of other topics come up? No, we, we mainly stuck to debt limit. That was an hour. Mainly. Well, that was pretty much. I'm trying to think. We we told stories one another about different political things. Yeah, that's. Why I don't want to say. No. <laughs> I'm not going to share that. Hey, look. Since he's been president, we really haven't had one-on-one -on -one time like this. So, so yes, he remembered <laughs> me. Yes, and so from that perspective, I thought that was very positive. Um, he, he treated me very respectful. Um, I thought he was very clear on what he talked about. I was very clear and direct with him. And at no time did someone get into a shouting match or anything else. I thought this was a pro very productive conversation. Now, you know in all these different things. If you had a productive conversation and you both walked out saying, let's continue it, that's a positive for today. Tell us a little more. Just like, what did he say to you? 
they give you any advice? No, we just we told other stories, and it's just getting to know each other even more. Did he more. ask you about the uh, floor vote? Floor vote? No, he didn't ask about the floor vote. Do you know that the CAPS deal before um, that Pelosi and former President Trump discussed, is that on the table? Look, I think whatever comes out, it would be more productive of us to know what we're going to spend for the next two years to the approach. I, I just think that makes Congress work, and we would have to have that done. Do you have any assurances from Senator McConnell that he's not going to undercut you and cut a deal with Biden? You know, I, I met with McConnell yesterday. No, I, I don't think they would do anything like that. He was very supportive of going. And I think at the end of the day, whatever we come to an agreement on, they're going to have to be a part of in Schumer, too, because Schumer's got a lot of work he has to do. He can't move another Omni bill. He's going to have to do the appropriation process. They're actually going to have to come into work here. Would you be open to like two or three minibuses, or does every one of the 12 approves bills have to be alone? I'm not going to predetermine. The one thing I do know is you got to move appropriation bills. You can't wait till Christmas and have two people write it who would no longer be along and then throw it onto the table. That's when you get problems, and that's what's put us into this problem. Just going back to the, the sense that this would be a bipartisan bill, you're essentially signaling to your Republicans that you, you will leave them behind and make no, a that, deal. That, that's your interpretation. She said you don't need 218. No, so what that's I what I said in the B, she said, are you going to get 218? Mm -hmm. Maybe we get 218 for it. But what I'm saying is, like any other agreement where you come to, I would assume Democrats would vote for it as well, because it is an agreement. That, because it would never get through the Senate if only one party was going to vote for it either. So I don't predetermine. If we have to go do our own and send it, we can do that. But I think it's more productive at the end of the day if you want to pass a bill that gets signed into law, let's work that out now. Um, I think the debt ceiling is different than other negotiations. So it's not something you want to play games with. And I'm trying to take a very responsible position here sitting down five months in advance, telling the president, not predetermining what somebody needs. All I'm saying is I'm not raising a clean debt ceiling. The American public doesn't want it. And we need to spend less and we need to find ways that we change what we've been doing in the past. Your next step is what here? I mean, are you going to come up with an offer to give him and they're going to trade offers? Is that the next step here? I'm going to wait for the president to call back another day or so and uh, hopefully we'll sit down together even further. And you can come back and interview me more. We come to <laughs> yeah, that would be productive. How worried are you that some of these concessions that you had to make to your members to become speaker are going to get in the way okay, of these? Can you these tell me what those concessions are? Will you tell us? Motion to vacate. Yeah. The concession I made between the rules package from January 1st to when I was sworn in on the 7th was changing the vacate the chair from five to one. That's the only thing that changed. But all the other things, like like, what? like a balanced budget, like uh, um, 2024, yeah, 2022 okay. two levels. So, so we're going to, listen, what I, only thing I've ever agreed to was that I agreed to have regular order. I personally have to rethink all this, what I've been trying to do for the last four years, to put members on all the committees, right? You have to have a microcosm. So you solve the problem at the beginning instead of the end. Like everyone said, oh my gosh, you, you put people from the Freedom Caucus on the Rules Committee. Well, did any of you look at me two years ago? What did I do then? I put Freedom Caucus members on the Rules Committee. Oh my gosh, you gave Freedom Caucus a position in steering. What did I do two years ago? Nobody asked me. Freedom Caucus, anybody else. Because what I do, I sit back and look. Where in the makeup of our conference are people not equally represented? Because if you have equal representation, at the very beginning, everybody's having their opinion heard. So if you wait till the very end, five people can stop anything. So I'd rather have the discussion up front so you produce a better product. So no, there's not special arrangements of anything else. Nobody said and said, I gotta have a gavel for a vote or anything else. People had concerns in Arvin, they wanted to make their cases, but everybody had something different. The only thing at the end of the day that I agreed to was change it from five votes to vacate to one. The same way it's been for a hundred years, except for when Nancy was speaker. That's the only difference. Separate topic. Sure. On Omar. Yes. 
You have struggled to find the votes. No, I haven't. Okay, well, you've been... I just moved a rule. It passed. Uh, well, I know, but before this, you have held multiple meetings well, talking well, to your members about what all the things that she did and said and why she shouldn't be on the committee. So my question to you is, if it was harder, if it was hard to find votes to kick Omar off her not. committee, why was it so important to you to push that? Why personally do you think separately from what you've told us, but why are you continuing to push this when you didn't have the votes for a while? Okay, first, I've always had the votes. Second, I don't know what you're talking about, these multiple meetings. Well, what meeting, what conference, meeting? conference you've gone, you, you or your staff have gone through several times. Okay, well, let's, let me tell you what happens in conference. What do I do in conference? I tell people or what's coming up, mm -hmm. and that vote's coming up. So I explain to people that this is so different than what the Democrats have done. The Democrats walked in and judged Republican members of Congress for something they said before they were members of Congress and threw them all off committee. The only thing I've focused on, and this is not something new, this is not something that was offered during the speaker race or anything else. I said this more than two years ago. When Omar, only as a member of Congress, sitting on foreign affairs, and then I look at those who are sitting on intel. Both of these entities get classified briefings. Omar, at the very beginning, when she said it's all about the Benjamins, that was referring to, to my tweet, when she referred to American military equal to Hamas and Taliban, when she referred to 9-11, something happened that day, those were all moments that when she was a member of Congress. When members walked up and tried to move a resolution, the Democrats watered down the resolution and said, we're just against anti-Semitism, nothing about her. If you would go back to the Democrat former chair of the, of the Foreign Affairs, Elliot, I bet he would vote with us as well. I had a number of Democrat members talk to me about wanting to be in this position. I'm not saying she can't have committees. She's more than well having committees. But to sit on foreign affairs, I'm, I worry about would the other members get a, the same, would they get a briefing if she's in the room? I'm worried about what the rest of the world looks at every single word that is said there. I'm worried about predetermining what she believes in that situation. She admitted herself. She didn't even know referring to financial money, do dollars, was a trope for those who happen to be Jewish. Just now she found that out? So look, there are many committees she can serve on. It's the same thing about Adam Schiff and Swalwell. I've been very clear about that. Why? Because in Intel Committee, you get the classified briefings, things you'll never see, things that other members don't see. All I've said is there's other people that can do that job, so put somebody else on it. And the thing I want to have happen in the intel to get back to the committee it was. This is perfect for Adam Schiff. He wanted impeachment, so he went, what is he on, judiciary now? Mm -hmm. That's the committee for impeachment. He finally found the committee that all the work he's done on. So that's great. So he won't be able to tell the American public the other lies because he won't have the classified. He may still lie, but we won't have to say, oh, it's a classified briefing. It was just, look, I believe in the book Good to Great. You ever read Good to Great, Jim Collins' book? Okay. Good to Great will tell you in this chapter, you find the right people on the bus for the right seat. I helped him find his right seat because he only cares about impeachment, so he should be on judiciary. But what that does is that helps the American public. So now we won't lose what China is doing against us. We'll know what's happening in Afghanistan. Members will be able to work together in Intel instead of be so partisan like it was before. I've sat and I worked with MIT. They have this course that they teach all the American generals for AI and for quantum, right? Artificial intelligence. Whoever captures that is going to have an advantage over other countries. So they have developed a course for members of Congress. So every member that's in the Intel Committee, Republican and Democrat, are going to take that together, right? So what happens is they're going to start thinking like in a SWAT, a strength, a weakness, opportunity, and threats. They're going to focus on the things they have to. That committee is going to become more bipartisan, focus on the things that they're intended to do and leave impeachment or anything else they want that to the Judiciary Committee and and swallow and shifts there so he's happy. So you said these, what about Gosar? Gosar? I would bring it up today if the Democrats put her on committee. I can only bring it up once she's on committee. Gosar, Gosar, tweet, Gosar tweeted 
while he was a member of Congress, you said these were past actions that Democrats attacked your members over. But mm -hmm. why was – but, but why, why, why are you okay with they Gozar? Kicked, they kicked standing? them off all committees, right? Where did you see, where did you see Gozar um, at the beginning of this Congress? Who was he talking to? Did you read that bad lip reading? Yeah. Yeah, so I think things are better there, aren't they? Did, did Santos stepping down make it easier for you to uh, do the Omar resolution this week? Was there any, no. is there any there's interaction? No, there's no correlation, correlation to that. Santos stepping down is based upon Santos issues. I think it's better that Santos is not on committees right now until he clears up these discussion, these did issues. Him? Did you pressure him? No, I had a discussion with him, and he said to me he thinks it would be best that he doesn't serve on committees right now, and I agreed with him. What changed from last week, though? You said, Representative, last week when you said he was going to be seated on committees that you thought that was the right move, but now you think it's the right move that he's not on committees. So what changed? I had some new questions. About what? About what? I, I think I think going through ethics will answer some others, and I think until he goes through that, um, it would be better that he doesn't serve on committees. Well, okay. but, but what are the new questions that emerged? Uh, we will that be part of we, we this didn't discuss that. We didn't discuss that. Can I ask you on Omar? Uh, Congressman Buck originally said he was not going to vote for this resolution. He said that after talking to you and getting some assurance about having an open conversation yeah. about changing the rules. Can you just explain what let, that let, was? Let me explain that to you. Um, I know some people in the media, probably none of you, are saying this is like tit for tat. It's totally different, right? If you watch, what are committees I'm dealing with? Only committees who are really dealing with foreign policy, classified issues, and others. What I would like to do that this doesn't transpire, I thought what the Democrats had done was wrong, removing everybody off committee. I was very clear about that. I think what would be best going forward for all future Congresses, and I will sit, and I haven't talked to Hakeem about this, but I will talk to Hakeem. Um, I think we should actually have a process that Republicans and Democrats alike, that maybe it sits within ethics or others, that it could come to a point where if somebody had done something of that level, that they could they could take the action, but it would be in a manner that we're not going to be doing this to people, that someone comes in, I just dislike you, because none of this is about dislike. So you want to put it to ethics? Well, I don't know if it's ethics, but I want to find a... You don't want the due, power in this I want a due process. I, look, I, I'm not going to pick people. I, I think the American public, like you all came to me, oh, Santos, you should throw him out of Congress. Well, I don't think I have that power, okay? The, his constituents just elected him. In America, you have due process. If it comes to a point where somebody in Congress that has done something to a level, yes, we'll vote for that then. But I shouldn't just pick based upon someone writes an article in the paper. And, okay, is there an issue that somebody sitting on Intel Committee, you've been in Congress, the FBI's never said anything about you, but we appoint you to Intel and the FBI comes to you and says, hey, we got a problem, this person has a relationship with a spy from another country. Well, if that came to that point, and the speaker still wanted to keep the person on, I actually think there's other people that can serve there. I think it's actually putting America in jeopardy. So in those situations, it wouldn't be that that person couldn't serve on any other committees, but that person probably shouldn't serve on that committee. That's what I'm doing here. But I think both parties would come to that agreement. Now, I moved a privilege resolution in the last Congress, and the Democrats all defended Swalwell, even though they knew he had a relationship with a Chinese spy, to stay on intel, even though they also knew he couldn't get a, a security clearance in the, in the private sector. But none of them had the FBI briefing. And for the idea that they'd sit there and say, well, well, Boehner had the FBI brief. The briefing I had was different than what Boehner, because that was at the beginning. And then they found others, right? So in that instance, I think it would be healthy that we don't sit here and say, I'm picking you off because I don't like you or anything else. That's not what this is happening. I don't want that to happen. So is there a way that we can find a, a process that if something does it, it comes to both parties saying, okay, that's wrong. Are your new questions about Santos, about his campaign finances, is that the new questions that you had? You're good at your job. Well, what's, Do you see that. the Foreign Affairs Committee? Uh, oh, so now we can vote her off. So will that be tomorrow? And will all of your yes. members, will all Republican members vote to kick 
Congresswoman Omar off of her committee? Uh, you know what, I've been, I don't know, I'm not going to say 100%, uh, but it could be. But yeah, we'll have enough votes. It should be. We'll have enough votes, even though there's some members who are out, unfortunately, because of family issues. Mr. Speaker, just to follow up on that, did you tell uh, Congressman Buck that uh, going forward, committee removals would require a majority vote by the Ethics Committee? Well, what I told him that, um, and I had this conversation with Victoria, too, we want due process, that we would work on uh, process. I don't know exactly what it's like, because I didn't want to, uh, out of, just don't want to pull something out of thin of my out of, uh, out of my head. I actually want to work with the Democrats on it too because I think it's healthy for the institution. And look, there's a lot of different things that I realized how I was treated as a minority leader. I don't want to treat the minority that way. And so I think when there's a situation like this, it's helpful to get down that we can get some members on both sides of the aisle to sit down and look at a place to do this. And Buck is one who's interested in it as well. And a former prosecutor, he would probably be good. Can I just, you, uh, earlier you, you were dismissing the idea of a commission, but Manchin has this idea of a commission on Social Security and Medicare. Is that look, a I, part of that as well? Or? <clears throat> I, I think Tom Cole has one too. Yeah. But, um, no, the, the question I got down there is like, do I need a commission to tell us where we could find ways to that? No, we got elected. We don't need to waste more time and have a commission go tell us what we already know. Okay, so you would be open to a Medicare or Social Security solutions idea? No, don't, don't, don't try to ask me that question. Okay. I, I, that's, that's good of you, you know, try to spin me, but no. <laughs> uh, we, we said that's not part of the discussion. Did you have another question? Oh, sure. I said that <laughs> question like eight questions ago. I was very good to all of you. Thank, thanks you for your time. time. Thank you. I called Jeffries because this is a situation when I was minority leader, I never got those briefings, okay? Like when January 6th was happening, the Sergeant Arms never talked to me before or after. And I just, when it comes to the policing of the Capitol, I just think that's wrong. So I, I called Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffrey and they said, look, this is what I'm told, and they're going to give me a briefing. Would you come and have the briefing with me? Because I think that would be smart. So he came and had that briefing with me. Um, I can't recall off the top of my head if we talked about State of the Union as well. Um, but I haven't had a briefing on that. But if I do, 